Good evening, everyone. Please stand with me as we sing hymn number 50, hymn number 50, There's Power in the Blood. That's an awesome hymn. Amen. All right. Well, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we start this evening. Father, we're sure grateful for you. And uh, Lord, thank you for that uh, precious blood that has the power to take me to heaven, to take everybody in this church to heaven. And not only that, to take everybody in our county to heaven. Lord, you could take everybody in our country to heaven. From what the Bible says, uh, that blood is powerful enough to take everybody in the entire world to heaven to forgive all the sin. And not only that, uh, you're powerful enough and that blood that you shed has the power to take everyone that's ever lived and everyone that ever will live to heaven. God, yeah, we're sure grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for shedding your blood for us. Thank you for church tonight. And uh, we need you and we ask for your help and presence tonight, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, so uh, there's a college career activity tonight right after the service. I hop, okay? Uh, there's also a parent team meeting after the evening service tonight. Um, there's an altar worker meeting Tuesday um, during soul winning. And then Wednesday, Brother Henry Ward will be with us. And then, yes, amen. And he's been our missionary for like 30 plus years. So there's a youth chapel this Friday, and it starts at 2. It's Godly Girlfriends and Preacher Boys, and that starts at 2. And then there's a ministry uh Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. If, you're, if you are a ministry leader, see Brother Tim to coordinate a Tuesday night uh, training. And then, so I'm going to go through all the times with us tonight. So February 23rd to 25th is Capturing the Moments with the Family with Pastor Corey Bain. Okay, so these are on the back table. So Friday, the February 23rd, is going to be a married couple's dinner at the Lighthouse Restaurant. Uh, that's at 6 o'clock p.m., and your name needs to be on the list today. Today is the deadline because we need to reserve a room. So that's going to be at 6 p.m. on Friday the 23rd. And we need a minimum amount of people. So 
Right. I think. Thinking about it, maybe go on maybe not go on that report. Yes. So we we need to get your names on there. How are we looking on the list? Okay. Okay. Twenty four couples. So that's about forty eight people. I think I think that's that's good. But we want everybody to come if you could. Amen. So Saturday, February 24th is the marriage seminar, and that's at church from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So it's two hours, and I think it's going to be in sessions. I think it's going to be ladies and a fellas. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. All right. And then Sunday, February 23rd is normal church with Pastor Corey Bain, and the focus is going to be <coughs> on the family. Amen. And Tim, was there something else? Dates for the Grand Prix or something? Yeah, the Grand Prix is coming up. So okay. So the, the Grand Prix, Prix is coming up. Is there... Yes, for the uh, altar worker. I did mention that. Okay. So the, grand, the Grand Prix is 9 a.m. on the 17th. Varsity Tech Tent from 6 to 8 on Friday the 16th. And we're going to have two groups, all covers in one group. Parents and teachers in the second group. Prizes for design and theme and tool shop and other things. And the worst car that doesn't make it down the track. Because I want a prize. I have a question. <laughs> Can we change the wet paint rule? No, no, there is a hard, fast rule. Wet paint, you better not smell like uh, WD-40. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you have to use... <coughs> you, you have to use dry lubricant on your axles. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. That, that makes me look the car. It makes the car all gray looking. All right, please stand with me again as we turn to hymn number 39. Hymn number 39, Take My Life and Let It Be. We'll sing all four verses. <laughs> On that banquet, um, did it tell you what? There was something um, I, I, I don't remember what all Rich said, but uh, uh, so the last you know you need to sign up by today, and um, tickets are on sale, seventy-five a person. Um, oh, you gotta have you need to buy them by the eleventh. So that's like the week before, but don't wait till the last minute, uh, please. Yes. Okay. But tonight you need to sign up as last Right. Day. Tonight sign up, deposit, $85, and um, so on that, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. If you would, don't put that in the, in the offering plate. Just, okay. You need to tell. Give, give the money to Michelle and Don't just put it in the offering plate. That's what Doug does. Doug. <laughs> just do what Doug does. Give Michelle the money. 
Okay. Yeah, if you pray, if you pray it to the church. Okay. Write it to the church. We'll write, we will write them one check. Yeah. And that will cover everything. That will cover the gratuity and, and um, taxes and everything else. So, And your actual meal costs more than, of course, the 65 But we want to help you be able to come as much as possible. Oh, speaking of tip, tonight, uh, I know how some singles are. And uh, you're going to IHOP. You must tip. If you don't tip. You can't come, and you need to tip at least, I mean, a minimum of 15%. Uh, more would be better because we're a church group. They're scooting tables for us, and, and so don't, don't say you're from our church, and the only way you can do that is not be with us. So uh, please, please, please tip, okay? Please. So I'm going to come around, see how much your meal is, and so I'm serious. Okay. All right. Uh, Brother Miller is going to lead us in prayer for the offering tonight. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. And Lord, we do thank you for the opportunity that we uh, have as a church family to get together for various fellowships, Lord. And we are grateful yep. for that, Father, as we... Um, hang out with one another, get to know one another, Lord, but ultimately, when we gather here, it's to worship and honor and Amen. love you, Father, and give you thanks for everything that you have done and will do in our lives, Lord. We just ask you now to be with this offering, multiply it, expand it, use it here and around the world, Lord, to see souls saved, Father, which is ultimately why we are here, Lord. And God, we will just give you the thanks and the praise for everything that we can give a little bit back for everything you've given to us. For all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Megan. All right. Yay. You could say amen. I mean, that's allowed. See, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? But you could say amen. Let's give a, uh, Megan. <laughs> I was going to say Amy. Uh, let's give Amy, uh, Megan a big amen. Ready? One, two, three. Amen. See, that's good. All right. Take your Bibles, if you would, please turn to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. So I was thinking about those of you that, that have cash, and you say, well, Pastor, I know what I'm getting, and I only brought so much money. And I have the answer. Okay? Don't buy your soda. That's tip. You say, oh, I was going to drink water and I barely have enough money. Um, don't buy a meal. Just come and fellowship <laughs> with somebody you know and you can eat, maybe eat a couple of their french fries or something. Um, but uh, I'm just serious. Okay. All right. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Um, this afternoon, between church, I went to visit Mary and the kids and all, the family. <coughs> and, um, you know, wanted to see how they're doing, but also wanted to talk to them about, you know, the funeral service and, you know, you know things that they would like. And 
with her thinking on that. Um, and Mary's son, I met him for the first time um, the other day when, uh, when his sister died. And um, so he was there. Uh, big, I didn't know, I didn't remember, I knew it, but I didn't remember that she had twins, and they're both, you know, big guys, uh, but Joey's bigger, he's like, I don't know, he's huge, he's like 6'5", six, six, maybe more, maybe 6'6", six, six, maybe 6", oh, he's huge, he's a state trooper, and he had all this stuff on when I met him the first time, I was like, whoa, you know, and, um, but he was there uh, today, um, and they were, they were actually working on pictures and stuff like that for the funeral service. And um, he, said, he said, Pastor Connor, could, at the funeral, could you talk about heaven? And I said, well, I, I, yeah, I like doing that. Um, and then he said, could you read the verses about, um, he said, I, I read these. I said, I, I can't remember where it's at. I got it marked in my Bible, and I'm not a preacher or nothing like that, you know. He said, but, but the verse is about mansions and a home. And I said, Joey, I'd love to do that. I said, that's, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. And, and um, uh, it already had this plan for tonight <coughs> that I was going to, uh, we're going to look at, think some more about heaven. I know I've been doing that a lot lately. And like I said, I hope it's not a message from the Lord, like, you know, but uh, for me, um, but uh, I like thinking about heaven, and and it's been a blessing. Um, you know, and thinking about in heaven, what's it going to be like, and and uh, so I just want to share a couple thoughts with you tonight on that. Um, Revelation chapter twenty one, chapter twenty, or yeah, Revelation chapter twenty one, um, and I know we're the bride. Um, but it's, 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 you know, we're going to the wedding. The Bible says we're going to a wedding and, um, you know, a bride, uh, normally spends a lot of time thinking about the wedding. If you think about the average bride, um, some of the ladies I know have been planning on the wedding. They start when they're like kids. Uh, to get, uh, I don't know if they do it anymore, a, to- a hope chest. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, in our family, uh, some of them had hope chests, and, and that was stuff they would put in uh, the box for years for when they get married. And, uh, you know, and they just, um, like when, when Lori and I were planning the wedding, I say we were, but it really, I, I'm like, hey, you know, I hadn't put really a whole lot of thought into it. Like, you know, you just get married, right? Uh, but no, man, it was like a lot of work. And uh, But she wanted to do that, and she thought about what the Bible says, that we're the bride, and we're getting married. There's a wedding day coming. And um, you know what? Um, we should be putting some thought into it for when that day comes. Amen. And the, Bible, and the Bible says in chapter 21, it talks about the bride. And, um, you know, one thing I, I look forward to seeing is, like, what are we going to do and how the bride gets dressed up? But the Bible says in, in verse 9, uh, the second part of it, um, it says, Come hither, I will show, come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And that's us. Us. Amen. Um, something else I'd like to see if you're in chapter 21. Look at verse uh, 22. I want to see that book with my name in it. Amen. You know, there's a real book and it really has your name in it. Um, the Bible says in verse 22, it says, And I saw no temple therein, <coughs> for, the, uh, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. 
Think about this. Where was, where was the temple in the Old Testament? What was it? Yeah, I mean, Jerusalem, but what, what was it? Tent, then became a building. And then, right, and then, what's the temple now? It's us. There's always been a temple. God said, this is where I'll be. Or this is where I am. Right now, the temple's us. It used to be a building, or tent, and then a, then a, a, a building with Solomon, and now it's us. But in heaven, it'll just be him. Amen. And it says, uh, verse 23, And the city had no need of the sun, nor neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the, remember God said he made us a sun and a moon down here because it'll give light, and be able to give us direction and time. Well, hey, he'll do all that. He'll give light, he'll give direction, he'll give, well, not time, but maybe the work schedule or whatever we're doing, the activities of the, of the day. I don't know how all that works, but um, it'll be him. And he says, uh, and for the glory of God did lighten it, and the, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light, uh, in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, where there shall be no night there. Never closes. Amen. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise, you know, he talks about all the heaven is, and he says, and there shall in no wise enter in anything that defileth, not one thing. That's why if you're not saved, that's, that's, a, that's another reason why if you're not saved, you can't go because you're defiled, you're a sinner, you're tainted, and God said nothing. Like that will be in here. It, it'll be God's house. It'll be our house. And there's no, it will not be defiled. You know, it doesn't take much to defile. You say, well, I'm not a bad sinner. And, you know, I'm a really good person. Well, it doesn't take much to defile. If you, if you have a, a big barrel of water, right, somebody spits in it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't want any of it, right? And hey, heaven will, it's, 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 uh, he said, uh, there, sh uh, there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Your name, that's going to make the difference between you being in or not. Amen? Going or not. When you get to that big, you know, if you will, people picture it, that big open gate that we just read about, but you won't be able to go in. You're not going in. But if you are, you go in because your name is in that book. And I'd like to see that book. I'd like to see that book. Uh, won't you? Yeah. Amen. Uh, turn to Psalm chapter 56. Psalm chapter 56, please. Psalm chapter 56. I got my tie perfect on wrong. Not perfect. You know what the tie perfect is? Some of y'all don't even know. Wow. Yeah, I'll show you. You you button the two buttons to your shirt, and then you put your thing on your tie in there, and then you button the last button. And then while you're moving your tie, because if you put a tie clip on, it can wrinkle up like that. With this, it slides up and down. Perfect. The tie perfect. It says Patuxent Baptist Church on it. 
we put it in preacher's baskets and stuff. out. I've given them out in church before, but obviously you don't want them. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm sorry. Um, so in Psalm chapter 56, there, the Bible says that there's a bottle in heaven. And in that bottle are your tears. That, that amazes me. That's just, but you know what God is saying? He says, I, I, I catch every tear. And every tear that goes in that bottle, he knows why, why it's there. In other words, he knows the heartache that you had. He knows why that tear is in a bottle. And he keeps them. That's amazing. And I want to see that bottle. Um, in verse 58, it says, <coughs> Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou, put thou my tears into thy bottles, his bottles. Are they not written in thy book? God, so according to the Bible, God watches and knows about and cares about every tear that you shed, every care, every burden, every sorrow. You know, when I was over there today, um, one of Denise's sons, which comes here some, uh, his name's William, and uh, he said, he said, you know, I'm, I'm uh, what did he say? He said, I'm, I'm having a tough time. William, uh, I said, and I started telling him about when when my dad died. My dad was older, and I was kind of, you know, he was sick, and, and I was kind of expecting it, but still. And uh, and I prepared to preach the funeral, and and you know I didn't know every time I saw my dad for like the last ten years, he said. I think this will be the last time I see you. I was like, Dad, stop saying that. And, and one time it was. And uh, so, so for a long time I thought about the funeral and how I was going to preach or what I was going to do. I said, but when that time came, I just, I was just, I couldn't. All I could do was sit there. And I said, I said, William, I don't, I don't know what you're going through, but I know it was tough for me, and and I love you, and and you know, but see, God knows everything in William's heart right now, and God cares, and God's catching those tears, and they mean something to God. Um, yeah, I thought you know maybe sometimes. The tears is like, God, I, I know, and, and I trust you, but you know, sometimes I just don't understand, or, or it's like really, you know, I, I said I would trust you, but this is really hard, and, you know, but God knows that. You said you'd come and share all my sorrows. You said you'd be there for all my tomorrows. I came so close from sending you away. But just like you promised, you came there to stay. I just had to pray. Jesus said, come to the water and stand by my side. I know you're thirsty and you won't be denied. I felt every teardrop. When in darkness you cried, and I strive to remind you, for those tears I died. And he does. He cares. He loves you. And that, that bottle, I think, is one of the most precious things in heaven to the Lord because it's you. It's you. You think about, you know, he, he probably... And I would think, you know, he looks at those tears and he said, these were shed when you were trusting me. 
and you were trusting my plan and I had a plan and you trusted me. Now we get to see. Now we get to see our faith become sight. I look forward to seeing that bottle. Take your Bible, if you would, please turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You know, something else in heaven <coughs> that I look forward to seeing is people I've been missing real bad. Do you have some folks that you, you can't wait to see? Amen. Uh, some people I've been missing real bad. You know, I think about, I, I guess, you know, there were some people that we knew that passed away before this, but a good, good friend of ours, he was, he was a lot like Brother Rich, Pastor Carnes. Yeah, he was a lot like Brother Rich. And um, he was just, you know, he helped us through a lot of stuff, and, and, uh, he was over in Calvert County, and we were here, and he would just help us and call us. He'd call us out of the blue, just tell us he loved us, and you can make it, and, and don't ask for any money, and stuff like that. And he just loved us, and, but I can't wait to see Brother Carnes. Can't wait to see my mom and dad. I was telling Jose about my sister. We got talking about Jehovah's Witnesses and stuff, and, and I said, I... I I've never seen a Jehovah's Witness that got saved. I've never met one. I've met several Mormons, you know, things like that. But I said I'd never met a Jehovah's Witness that got saved. And then I met this lady when I was teaching years ago in, in the Bible college. I was actually, I think I was teaching a Colts class. And I met her and I said, hey, would you come in and talk to our class? And so she kind of gave her testimony and... Um, but she was the only person I'd ever met that was a Jehovah's Witness that got saved. And, um, and it, that was huge for me because um, it was, just seemed so rare. Uh, because my sister was a Jehovah's Witness for years, years and years and years. In fact, when I was little, I remember in second grade, when I was in second grade, my sister used to have the, the Bible studies, the Jehovah's Witness Bible studies at the house. And, and, you know, the stories they told, and I loved the little books. You know, they're eating apples and all these. They had really good pictures and telling me about the kingdom and, and all this. And it sounded so good. Um, she even took me to, um, this was when I was a teenager, she took me to uh, like conferences. And the one I remember the best was a big um, uh, Jehovah's Witness conference in Philadelphia. They rented a stadium, and it was packed. And, uh, and you know, they baptized there. And, and then I, and after I got saved, I thought about my sister. So she, you know, I thought, she's never going to get saved. And I prayed for my nephews and my nieces. They'd moved to the Philippines by that time. And. And uh, I pray for my nephews and my nieces and my sister, my brother-in-law, and pray for them every day. They're, they're some of the very first people I started praying for. And then, uh, then I got word my sister died. She died in the Philippines, and I never, I never saw her again. I never saw her from the time I was saved until she died, which was several years. And uh, I got to talk to my nephew. I talked to him in years and years and years, kind of like a little kid that I used to pick on when last time I saw him. And um, I said, you know, and then, then the, he said, he said, Rick, I heard you're a preacher or something, or, you know, and I started giving him my testimony. And he said, well, I'm saved. And I said, what? You're saved? His name's Jimbo. Jimbo, you're saved? He goes, oh, yeah. He said, we all got saved. I said, even Ruthie? He goes, oh, yeah, I led my mom to the Lord. Amen. And, uh, whew, that's awesome. I said, Jimbo, how did you get saved? 
He sent a missionary. <laughs> um, hey, God's good, amen. And I, I just can't wait to see my sister in heaven. Heaven's uh, going to be a great place. I mean, it is a great place, but I'm going to get to see how great it is. And when I say me, I mean you too, right? This is for us. Um, hey, there are some things on earth uh, that we won't have to put up with anymore, Right? Like some of you guys. And, no. The Bible says uh, in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4, the Bible says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. No more sea. No more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. Uh, and I like that about heaven. I, you know, we talked about that. Like, I like heaven for what's not there, amen? Uh, but there's things that are there, too. And the greatest thing about heaven is that Jesus is there. And you don't have to wait to get to heaven for Jesus because Jesus is here right now. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13, Jesus said this. He said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So the the alphabet, the Greek alphabet, the first letter is A. The last letter is omega. That's kind of like our A to Z. So what Jesus is saying is he said, listen, I'm everything you need from A to Z. Just fill in the blanks. Uh, from the beginning, from the beginning of your life, from the beginning of your uh, family, the beginning of your job, to the end, he said, I'm here. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the first thing and the last thing. Jesus is alpha, our Adonai, our advocate, the almighty, the author and finisher of our faith. He's the babe at Bethlehem and the bridegroom, the bread of life, and the bright morning star. He's the Christ and the creator and the cornerstone and the counselor, the chosen one. Jesus is the chief shepherd. Jesus is the door, the day star, our, our delight and deliverer. Jesus is Emmanuel, the exalted one from, the, from everlasting to everlasting. He's the first fruits of the resurrection the fountain of life, the foundation of the church, the friend of sinners. He's God. He's our guide, the good shepherd, the great physician. Jesus is our hope, our help, our healer, our high priest. Jesus is the great I am, our inheritance, the immortal, the invisible, and the invincible. Jesus is our joy and our justifier. He's the king of kings and the king of glory. Jesus is the Lord of life, the love, the light of the world, the living water and the lamb of God. He's the Messiah, the master, the mediator, the messenger, the son of, uh, the man of sorrows. Jesus is the Nazarene. He's the new wine. He's the new covenant. Uh, he's the name that is above every name. Jesus is the omega, our offering for sin. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. He's the prophet. He's the priest. He's our Passover, our propitiation, 
for our sins. He's the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the quieter of the storms of life. He's the Redeemer, the Refuge, the Refiner, the Rose of Sharon, the Resurrection, and the Life. He's the Savior, the, the Shepherd, the Suffering Servant, the Son of God. He's the Truth and our Teacher. He's the unblemished Lamb of God. He's the vine and the vicarious sacrifice. He's the victor over the grave. Jesus is the way, the word made flesh. He's the witness, the water of life, and our wonderful counselor. He's the expected Messiah of the Old Testament and the exalted Lord of the New Testament. He's our yoke fellow. He's uh, yesterday and today and forevermore. Jesus is Zion's holy king. So there's a lot that God has for us right now, amen? He's A to Z, everything we need. But I also like the no mores of heaven. You know, we read uh, Revelation 21. Think about this. The no mores of heaven... Uh, no more adversity, no more aggravation, no more agitation, uh, no more uh, annoyances and no more athletes' feet, no adultery, no abortions, no AIDS, no Alzheimer's disease, no more acne, no more addictions, no more bunions, no more baldness, unless everybody's bald in heaven, you know that's wrong. Uh, no more... Uh, Back aches, no bitterness, no broken bones, no broken homes, no beer, no bad breath, no more business meetings, amen. No more cancer, no more cemeteries, no confusion, no more crime, no more cussing, no more complaining, no more crying. Oh, no more mockers, no more car wrecks. No more crutches, no more computers, no more doctors, no more dope, no more divorce, no more dandruff, no more dirty dancing halls, no more deceit, no more debt, no more disobedience, no more disappointments, no more death, and no more devil, no more evil, no more earwax, no more enemies, no more eyeglasses, no more funerals, amen. No more false teeth, no more fads, no more fears, no more failings, no more fallings, no more fighting, fussing, feuding, and fault finding. No more goodbyes, no more guilt, no more gout. And that's not funny if you have gout. I've never had it, but when I've seen people that have it, I say, thank you, Lord. I don't have it yet. Uh, no more griping, no more gossiping, no more girdles. The lady said, amen. Okay. No more heartaches, no more hearing aids, no more hernias, no more hatred, no more hospitals, no more hurricanes, no more high blood pressure. Amen. No more insurance, no more insane asylums, no more internal revenue, no more immor immorality, no more insects. No more incest, no more itching, no more jails, no more jealousy, no more killing or kidney stones, no more liars, no more liberal preachers, amen, no more long hair on men, including Jesus, amen, no more lawyers, liquor, no more light bills, Jesus will light the city, amen. No more lawns to cut. Hallelujah. No more misunderstandings. No more mucus. No more mice. No more mosquitoes. No more mother-in-laws. So I saved it for tonight. Oh, sorry, Mom. She's probably watching. Love you, Mom. That's what they say. I don't know. Okay. No more nastiness, no more nudity, no more needs, no more nursing homes, no more obituaries, no more obscenities, no more obsessions, except for Jesus. 
No more politicians and police and pornography and pain and pills and problems and puking. No more quarreling and quitting and questioning why. No more rock music, no more rebellion, no more roaches. No more sickness and sorrow and snot and sinus colds. No more school and selfishness and no more shacking up, no more stealing, no more seizures. No more toothaches, no more toe jam, no more tobacco, no more television, and no more tears, and no more t trials, and no more troubles, and no more telephones, and no more Tim. Oh, time, time, okay? <laughs> Sorry, Tim. No more ulcers, and no more undertakers, and no more ugly. No more violence, and vengeance, and vomiting. No more wheelchairs and wayward children, wayward grandchildren, and wayward loved ones. No more wigs, no more water bugs, no more whoremongers, and no more worldliness, and no more wrinkles. No more x-rays and x-rated movies. No more yielding to sin and youthful lust. No more zigzagging because we'll be making the straight line to the throne of God. Hey. The things that trouble us here won't be there. And if that's all I do about heaven, it'd be great. Yeah. Amen. Hey, you can make your own list and just say, thank God. Thank God. Amen. Let's all stand, please. Maybe you just want to thank the Lord. And again, <coughs> the only way you can get to heaven is you must be born again. I'm glad I'm going to heaven. I used to lay in my bed and think about hell. You know what I thought about? That's where I'm going. I'm going to hell. I used to ask God, I used to say, God, why did you even make me here? Why did you make me and put me here? Because I'm going to hell. I'd have rather not been born. I told God that many, many times. But the day I got saved, I said, Lord, thank you for making me. And I'm glad I'm here now. Changed everything. Changed everything. You know, there's lots of people that need that. They, you know, people are wondering. It just seems like more than ever. They're just wondering wh why. What's, you know, what's the purpose? And they're trying things, and you know, uh, becoming homosexuals and having their body changed, and people are just looking. They, they just need God. They just need God. And guess who's going to be the ones that tell them? It's us. So let's just say, Lord, like I, like I said this morning, if you have somebody on your mind, just say, God. You might say, God, I don't know where to start. I don't know how I'm going to do this. But if you'll give me an, if you'll give me an opportunity... I'm going to be watching for it. If you give me an opportunity, I'll take it. I'll take it. Amen. Father, please uh, help us as thy people. And, and Lord, maybe, uh, maybe there's some specific things in our hearts as a Christian. And uh, we, we need you. We need your help, direction. And also, we just want to thank you. And bless now our invitation as folks uh, feel they need to come. In Jesus' name we pray. With their heads bowed and God spoke to your heart about something, why don't you come?
peace forevermore. Forgot that one. Some people we miss, then we have this promise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. I don't know. I just, I think, I don't know. We're going to be going up together. Us, if you're, if you're here and alive, but the people that we love and have missed. I wonder do we get to go up with them? I think I think it's gonna be greater. Like I said, whatever you can imagine is gonna be better than that. <laughs> My sister's gonna grab me on the way up and say, Let's go. Right? Wow. I don't know. But whatever he does, it's gonna be good. It's already good. We just don't know all the details yet, but it's already good. Okay, well, uh, IHOP. What's the important thing about IHOP? Tip. 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 Good tip. Good tip. One time we went to a conference. I'm done. But this guy, if you need to leave, you can. Though I won't tell you the story. This guy was with us, and we're all a big church group. You know, going to a conference, a Bible conference, and so we go out to eat afterwards, and and uh, this guy spent his money, all of his money on tapes, preaching tapes and stuff. So we went out to eat, and we're all putting our money in for the tip, and I was one of the last ones to leave, and he puts his check on the tip pile. And I said, what are you doing, man? He said, I ain't got no money. I said, so what's that? So he was wanting to pay his check with the tip that we left. So I said, what What are you doing? Why, why don't you have any money? It's only like the second day here. He puts his head down. He said, tapes. Don't do that. Okay. Be, so watch the guy. It's mainly the guys. Watch the, watch the guys. And so when we're all even, make sure their checks not on the table. I'm just kidding. No, I'm kidding. Okay. All right. Uh, parent, team meeting. parent team meeting. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Father. Father.